what an exciting moment this is. And uh, after nearly five years of work uh, with some of the most patriotic Africans and African institutions, and several in the local technology and entertainment ecosystem, we arrive at the launch of the iDice program, the Investment in Digital and Creative Enterprises program. As you've all heard, the program is a government initiative to promote innovation and entrepreneurship in the digital technology and creative industries, and especially targeted at job creation. What you may not have been told is the incredible effort that Dr. Akimumi Adishino, president of the FDP, put into this to make it happen. The thinking around this came from a discussion he and I had in 2018, I think it was in South Africa, on how to leverage technology and industry for jobs for young people. And he told me at the time that the AFDB was already thinking along the lines of committing some funding to some iteration of the idea. The fruit of that discussion and the hard work of many is what we we'll witness here today. The fund, as we've been told, is $618 million, out of which the AFDB provides $170 million. The Agent Francais de Développement provides $100 million, and the Islamic Development Bank will provide $70 million in co-financing. The BOI, who represents the federal government, will provide $45 million as a counterpart contribution to be availed through loans for qualifying startups. And as we've heard from the president of the AFDP, we expect uh, by leveraging this fund, another maybe $270 million from private sector and institutional investors. I think it's important to mention that private capital has usually been ahead of government effort. And I think the private sector ought to be commended for being so innovative, especially here in Nigeria. The last few years, we've seen a consistent rise in venture capital investments in Nigeria's technology ecosystem in particular. Uh, for, for example, I think it was the uh, Disrupt Africa's 2022 tech funding report, which says that Nigeria was the best funded country in Africa for the second year running, with a minimum of 180 startups, making approximately 30% of Africa's funded ventures and raising approximately 1 billion US dollars, substantially ahead of all other countries on the continent on both counts. This influx of private capital has enabled startups to expand operations and create new jobs while contributing significantly towards our own uh, GDP growth. There are, of course, thousands of startups that have used private funds or debt that goes unrecorded, and I think they probably constitute the majority in our country. I think it's now imperative to commence a coordinated approach towards innovation on the continent, bringing together all stakeholders to coordinate efforts at scaling up investments and building programs that provide the right enabling environment and produce talent pipelines that support the growth of innovation on the continent. But we must even do more. Government must provide more support for startups and small businesses, and investors must provide more funding. This is why the investment in digital and creative enterprises program is important. It brings together the public sector and our development partners the FDB, as you've heard, the Islamic Development Bank, the French Development Agency, to design a program that supports innovation access across critical pillars, including policy infrastructure, access to finance, and talent. These pillars have been identified as being critical to the growth and sustenance of innovation on the continent. As a government, we have sought to provide support to the innovation ecosystem over the last eight years. In 2018, we established the Technology and Creativity Advisory Group, and the advisory group brings together stakeholders in the technology and creative industries 
to contribute directly to policy formulation, articulation, and design of the technology and creative sectors of our economy. As part of the work of the advisory group, which has the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, the Honorable Minister of Finance, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investments, and the Minister of Information and Culture. As members, the group has influenced various government policies for the growth of the economy. For instance, the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy, working with NITLA, has established a center for artificial intelligence and robotics. The ministry has also led the coordination of our partnership with Microsoft to increase Nigeria's technology talent pipeline by training 5 million Nigerians in various technology skills. Just last October, the president signed Nigeria's startup bill into law, making it the Nigeria, making it the Nigeria Startup Act, the act that, that now provides a legal and institutional framework for the development of startups in Nigeria and also provides an enabling environment for growth of startups in the country. One key area of government support is funding, venture capital funds to provide seed and early stage funding to technology startups. For example, the government set up the Nigeria Investment Growth Fund to provide funding and technical assistance to startups in the country. The Bank of Industry has a, also has a 1 billion, I think it's a 10 billion, uh, uh, fund, Nollywood fund or Nolly fund as it's called, to support film production. And we have recently upgraded and renovated the National Theatre, positioning it to become Africa's creative hub. Similarly, as chairman of the National Economic Council, I've engaged with the state governments on issues of expanding access to broadband infrastructure in Nigeria. Through these engagements, many state governments have worked with us in various capacities, including by reducing and harmonizing the cost of provision and also the cost of right of way in their own, uh, in their own states. Just last week, as part of this continuing engagement, Oshun State has waived the, uh, the right of way charges for fiber infra infrastructure in the state, joining a host of other states that have done the same or reduced their fees significantly. This would, of course, in the near future, bring down the cost of providing broadband infrastructure in individual states and increase access to broadband, which, of course, is critical for the growth of a digital economy. With regard to the creative industry, the federal government has also taken action to include the sector amongst those that could benefit from the government's pioneer status. So today, uh, any entertainment company can benefit from pioneer status. In other words, it has several tax breaks, tax holidays when it starts, when uh, they start their businesses. And of course, some of these, uh, some of these incentives especially fiscal incentives, can still be negotiated. Efforts are also underway to tackle piracy in terms of intellectual property and copyright and to, and to secure financial resources to support the sector and also to enable the building of required infrastructural, infrastructural facilities. So the IDICE program, as we've said, will be oversighted by the BOI, the Bank of Industry, and supported by our partners here today. And those partners, as you have heard already, are AFDB, Islamic Development Bank, and the French Development Agency. Microsoft also, as part of our partnership signed in 2020, has also committed to supporting the program with technical assistance, knowledge sharing, and capacity building, and particularly focusing on the talent pipeline. So again, we would like to thank Microsoft for being there for us practically all the time. I believe that over the tenure of this program, we'll see significant additional support and investments from other partners and stakeholders across the sectors, leading to an increase in the growth of uh, startups and, of course, the growth of unicorns, new unicorns, and training more talent on the continent. Thank you all very much for listening.